Elliott Ranch Elementary School, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Elliott Ranch Elementary School. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Hi, my name is Rip Vick, and this question is from Mr. Wiseman. How much gravity is in space? Well, that's a great question, because right now, uh, my commander here, Steve, he can just pick his feet up. He can float all around. So as far as we can tell, there is no gravity up here. But we're actually being pulled around the Earth, and the uh, gravity that's affecting the space station is almost exactly what you're experiencing right now on the ground. We just don't realize it up here. Hi, my name is Alex, and this question is for Dr. Swanson. What planets can you see? Well, Alex, we can see the same planets you can see pretty much. And just like we look out our night sky, it's kind of like your night sky. It's just a little clearer, and the, and the stars and the planets don't twinkle because we don't have any atmosphere to see them through. Hi, my name is Harper, and this question is from Mr. <gasps> Wiseman. What are the first things that you were 3D print for the ISS? And once you're done 3D printing, what would you 3D print for fun? <laughs> well, that's a really good question. We're hoping to have a 3D printer up here in October, and I really hope I get a little bit of time before I leave to play with it. So the first thing that we will print is actually going to be a design from school children, I think a little older than you all, that they submitted to NASA, and that'll be the first thing we print. And it's still a surprise to me. I don't know what it's going to be, so I'm really excited to find out what, uh, what they picked, but I'm sure it'll be great. And uh, what would I print if I could in my own free time? Right now, I miss my kids. So I think if I could make little uh, 3D models of my kids and just <laughs> float them around up here, I think that would be great. Hi, my name is Amina, and this question is for Dr. Swanson. On Earth, we know that it is night and day by looking at the sky. How do you know when it is night and day on the ISS? That's a really good question. We do. We see 16 sunrises and sunsets uh, every day up here. I know what time it is though, by my watch, and that's what we live off of. We live off of actually the time that would be in London, England, and that's what we set our watches to. And when it's uh, 6 in the morning, we get up, and when it's 10 in the, at night, we go to bed. So that's how we kind of live our life. Hi, my name is Ethan, and this question is for Mr. Wiseman. I have been researching the space elevator idea for the ISS. What do you think the benefits are, and do you think it would be possible that it will ever be constructed? Well, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, I think uh, it's really complicated. And with the materials and the, and the engineering and science that we have right now, I, I would say it was, it's almost impossible under today's technology. But that doesn't mean it is impossible. And uh, what benefits? Well, when I flew up here on a rocket ship, uh, almost 90%, maybe even a little more, of my vehicle was all fuel just to get me through the atmosphere into space. Uh, so if we could have a space elevator that could just slowly bring cargo up to the space station, well, that would be phenomenal. It would be a huge savings uh, for time, energy, and money. But uh, we'll see. I think it's a little ways in the distance. But keep doing the research, because it would be great to have. Hi, my name is Evan, and this question is for Dr. Swanson. What have you found most surprising or challenging about your work on the ISS that all your special training beforehand did not prepare you for? That's a good question, too. For me, it's been when you work, of course, in this environment, you can see everything floats. And so it's actually keeping track of everything when you work on a project. All your tools and all the parts, you have to keep organized and keep secure someplace so they don't float off and then all of a sudden you don't know where they are. So that's one thing we really have to work on up here, and that's, I think, almost the hardest thing to do on any project. Hi, my name is Manasa, and this question is for Mr. Wiseman. What projects are you currently working on? 
So uh, we're, we're super busy right now. Uh, with more than playing with balls uh, here, but it is fun. And uh, so what I'm currently working on, we just finished up some pretty interesting flame research. And uh, right now we're installing some new science racks over in our European module that actually has an electromagnetic levitator in it. And we will have molten spheres of metal alloys that we will float in there and research what happens to them uh, in all different sorts of states. So that's going to be really amazing. And we're, we're spending a lot of time with that right now. And then uh, I think tomorrow Dr. Swanson has an a really amazing activity. We have a, a cool robot up here, and right now our robot doesn't have any legs. And tomorrow he'll be putting the legs on the robot, and we should be able to see this robot uh, very soon take its first steps in space, which will be a big, uh, big thing for us up here. Hi, my name is Gemma, and this question is for Dr. Swanson. I like doing chores. However, if I were doing chores in zero gravity, it would be a lot more fun. What chores do you enjoy doing most when you are in space, and why? That's a good question. I mean, I really do enjoy working up here in the zero and gravity environment. It makes everything so much more fun. And for me, for the chores, almost anything again is good, but I think I like to repair things. So when things break around here, I kind of get excited because I get to repair something and take it apart, see how it works, and put it back together again and, and, and fix it. And that's uh, it's the best thing for me. Hello, my name is Caitlin Leung Bob, and this question is for Mr. Wiseman. What are some parts or tools you hope to 3D print and successfully use aboard the ISS? Well, I would say the first tool I would love to print is a simple one. I would love to just have a screwdriver, uh, maybe slightly specialized, that we could use around the space station that we built. And I think that's a simple tool that we have at home, and that would be the perfect kind of simple first step for us to have up here. And I can't imagine in the future what kind of crazy tools we'll be able to think up, uh, tools that we haven't even dreamed of yet, but we could just print them out, use them if we need them, and then throw them away. I think that would be, really be amazing. Hi, my name is Krishna, and this question is for Dr. Swanson. How do we prevent or protect the ISS from solar flares or storms? Good question. And unfortunately, we don't protect it from storms. And so when we do get some activity out of the sun, we actually can tell up here because our computers will have issues. And, uh, and we just know about it by that way. I mean, we also get reports about what the sun's doing, but we can tell when it comes because uh, we'll have some failures of our computers. Hi, my name is Deesha, and this question for Mr. Wiseman, what, what's your favorite object on, on Earth to absorb from the state, um, from the state station? Great job. So my, my favorite thing to look at on Earth from the space station, well, I don't want to answer it this way, but everything everything. The mountains look amazing in the western part of the United States. The oceans are so blue and they're so vast. Uh, the deserts in Africa, the way the wind blows the dunes at night, looking at city lights is absolutely incredible. And then just last week, we had uh, a, a solar event that provided the most amazing aurora. The northern and southern lights that we can see at night are just these green weaving snakes or worms going through the atmosphere and we're flying among it. And uh, it's absolutely beautiful to see. Hi, my name is Samuel, and this question is for Dr. Swanson. How can I become an astronaut? Well, that's a good uh, goal in, in life. We both had that same goal. And for us, eh, it just takes hard work, just like anything else. Uh, you have to do well in school, and you have to find something that you really enjoy doing. And it does have to be, most likely for us, it has to be in the science or math or engineering related uh, technologies. And, but if you just do well at it and exceed in that, NASA will see that and they'll, they could, you know, that's one of the best things you have to do to head towards that goal. Hi, my name is Matthew and this question is for Mr. Wiseman. What kind of food do astronauts have to, have to eat to have a healthy, balanced diet? 
Well, uh, there's that's two different answers. Uh, the foods that we have to eat and then a healthy, balanced diet. So I've actually gained a, a couple pounds since I got up here, so maybe I need to eat just a little bit less. But all of our food is shipped up from the earth, and it's basically called shelf-stabilized food. So it'll last for many years. And uh, it mainly comes in little pouches. And we just rip a pouch open, and inside will be, I don't know, chicken fajitas or maybe some sort of uh, beef enchiladas. And really, the food is actually pretty good, considering uh, how stable it is and how long it lasts. So uh, I eat a diet pretty much like yours. The only thing I don't get is an occasional pizza, and I would love <laughs> to have a pizza right now. Hi, my name is Caitlin Snyder, and this question is for Dr. Swanson. Do you take care of animals in our space? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have animals up here. I would love to. I'd love to have a pet. I have pets at home. I have three dogs and a cat, and I would love to have an animal up here. It'd be, but I think it would be uh, interesting for the animal itself to live up here, and it'd be a little mussy to clean up afterwards. <laughs> Hi, my name is John, and this question is for Dr. Swanson. Do you have any favorite games that you like to play when you have free time? Yeah, we do have uh, games we do like to play up here. Uh, and they all about, uh, kind of, they're based on games on Earth, but they're all a little different up here because everything floats. So we have other games we like to do. Uh, say one of them is we'll take this ball and we'll try to aim it down the module way away and we can then change, we'll start doing a light throw on it and then we change where it goes by, by blowing on either side of it and making it move. And, uh, and we'll see a little example of that. He can make it move by that. And so we try to aim that way. It's just a game we play and see who can get it close to a certain object at the end. But we have many games like that we play. Uh, and uh, they're all fun up here because everything floats. This is Brian McNeil, the principal at Elliott Ranch. That completes our questions. Do you have time for one more? Oh, absolutely. We have time for one more. I have a question. Last week, you discovered uh, plant life growing on the outside of the space station. What are your theories as to why that is? Oh, I don't know. That, that's a great question. I, theory, I, I've been thinking about this uh, when I'm floating in my bed at night trying to go to sleep. Uh, how could this even be? So first, I, I'm ecstatic that they actually have found this. And uh, it's, it's just one of the many amazing things that happen up here when uh, it's the unexpected discovery. I think that's my favorite part of living on the space station. Uh, here's something that we didn't think was possible. We never even thought to look for it. Here they're looking for it, and we find it. And now we got to answer those questions that come from that, and the answers are going to be amazing. I guarantee it. Well, we'd like to say thank you, Mr. Wiseman and Dr. Swanson, for your time. We know you're very busy. This completes all of the questions from Elliott Ranch Elementary School. It was our pleasure. Those were some great questions. Thank you. I believe we have time for a question from the crowd, possibly. Is that correct? Wow. All right. Any questions from the crowd? Okay, my friend right here. We have a question from the crowd. Is aliens real? Are aliens real? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I think he might be alien, but that's a different story. But no, I, I don't know for sure. You know, but the way I look at it is there are so many planets out there that could be possibly have life in, in this universe that we have. I mean, they're just, it's, it's an enormous number that it almost seems to be there has to be something out there. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it is, but the odds are there's something. All right, Mr. Wiseman and Dr. Swanson, thank you again so much for your time. We'll let you get back to your busy schedule. We appreciate your expertise and sharing with us. Our pleasure. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.